can I change my services to because they're not doing what I need them to do? Especially if you've been a long time customer. Now, I'm from Denver, Colorado. We have, we have a, uh, we had a large array of services. So it was not anything for me to say, I don't like Comcast, or I can go to Comcast, or I can go to Verizon Files. But I believe now Comcast uh, is owned by Tom Warner, so they're buying up things. But here in Greensboro, you kind of don't have uh, uh, too many uh, choices of what you can do. But now they have these, these systems where you don't have to have cable anymore. You can have streaming live video, and unless you're, you're um, adamant about watching live television, you don't need time for a cable. All you need is a, if your kid already has an Xbox or if you have a receiver or modem, you can Hulu, Netflix, you can do that. Uh, live streaming. So, what these companies do on a regular basis, they have these customer service training to help the reps present their brand. Now, they work sometimes, doesn't work all the time, but they are also working on their brand as far as you as a customer because they want to keep you as a customer or they should want to keep you as a customer. And then also, when you are at work or you are with a client, or if you are at a networking event, you are branding. When you are networking and working in the room, you are branding. Believe it or not, whether anyone says anything to you, for example, at a networking event, they are watching you. They're looking to see what you're doing. I'm sorry, appearances are the first thing that people see. It, you know, they judge you sometimes based on your appearance. And if you don't appear savory to them, I like to use the word savory because I don't know uh, a better word to make it politically correct, but if you don't look savory to them, they're kind of going to shy away from you, or if you give them your business card, it'll likely end up in the trash or they won't use it or end up in a pile of business cards. So you are always networking yourself. When you are giving speeches, when you are at conferences, uh, when you go out, do you go out and give uh, speeches to, and I'm sure you do too, Sherry, and go out and give speeches? You can be in a crowd full of uh, a, a small crowd or a large crowd. Either way, you're trying to sell that person a thought, a service, or a product. When you're talking to someone and you're branding yourself, the people looking back at you are wondering, hmm, do I really want to buy something from that person? Um, they have a service I can use. Do I really want to use them? What makes them different? What makes them stand out? So as you're branding yourself, talking to people, make sure you do something that stands out from someone else. I'll use Tanya again because she's a jewelry lady. Tanya will come to my house if I can't meet her somewhere to deliver my jewelry. Macy's is not going to deliver jewelry to me. So Tanya stands out because she gives personal care. When you are shopping, you are branding. As soon as you walk in the door, what do they say to you? Hi, how can I help you? Can I, can I help you find something? They are looking at you. They saw you when you first walked in the door. They are watching you when you're walking through the store, depending on how big the store is, to see what you're looking at. Okay, she likes this. She is this type of person. She is this type of person. When you walk into a car dealership, you go to the Mercedes dealership and you see a car. Oh, that person right there likes the Mer Mercedes SLK. That's your brand. You're that's what you're trying to them, and they're going to try to sell that to you, and they're going to try to sell you that you look good in that vehicle. And that's why you should buy it, because it's part of what they think your brand is. Now, tip number two, identifying and, and uh, honing your niche. You have to decide what you are good at. I talk to clients all the time who will come to me and say, I wanted to do something, I don't know what. Well, what am I supposed to do with that? So I have to pick and pick and pick and talk and, and find out what this person is actually looking for. So it's like, what are you good at? In their mind, they're thinking something along the business aspect. Oh, I'm not good at nothing. I don't know. I'm not up to technology. You know, it's like, but still, what are you good at? What do you like to do? Well, I like baking. And they don't think that that's uh, an important uh, feature to have. How many of us like to eat? <laughs> <laughs> It, well, I have to or like to. Okay, I like to bake cookies. What's your specialty? My family says I make the best chocolate chip cookie in Greensboro. Okay, let's hone in on that. What makes your chocolate chip cookies stand out? Now, if it's an average chocolate chip cookie, what can you do 
to hone that skill and make that the best, actually the best chocolate chip cookie in Greensboro. So you have to do some research, you have to take some classes, you have to experiment, and you'll have to go in your kitchen and cook batches and batches of chocolate chip cookies until you come out with the right batch. So make sure you're doing that. If you still can't figure out, you know, well, I don't know if I'm good at anything, you know, I do things, but I'm not sure, what are you passionate about? I'm passionate about helping people. I'm passionate about writing. I'm passionate about marketing. I'm passionate about my grandchildren. So I'm passionate about a lot of things. With me, you'd be hard pressed to find anything that I wasn't passionate about. So everyone in here is, a, is passionate about something, no matter what it, what it is. And don't downplay what you're passionate about because it might be beneficial and valuable to someone else. In my industry, when I help people write their books, they'll say, well, no one wants to hear my story. This book might not sell. Well, first of all, when you write a book, especially if you're self-publishing, don't go into it thinking, okay, I want to make a lot of money. That's not going to happen, especially not right off. There is lots of work involved in, in telling a book. But I had a client who said that of her, she had, it was a true story. She had a tragedy that she had suffered growing up, and one of the ladies that she sold the book to wrote her this heart-wrenching uh, letter about how the book helped her and how she didn't realize that she was the only one, wasn't the only one going through what was described in the book. Well, I'm like, okay, I'm passionate about this story, and if I can help one person, then I feel good about it. So she began to use that as her speaking platform. She went on to talk about domestic violence. Now she's an international speaker on domestic violence. And that stemmed from her passion. So never downplay about anything about what you're passionate about or what you think you might be good at because you'd be surprised. What can you give to others? This is very important. A lot of people in business, especially entrepreneurs, know the value of giving back. Because people out there are the ones that are helping us thrive. We would be crazy not to try to give back to someone. And when I say give back, I mean, it could be in very many ways. It could be in volunteering. Um, as uh, Tanya mentioned, I uh, was one of the uh, mentors for the um, New Choices choice. choice program here. And I felt good giving back, teaching uh, women, you know, what my experiences were and finding out what theirs are and trying to help them. Or if I uh, help children at Junior Achievement, other people may help by going out and giving free seminars or free workshops. Or in your cases, PWN, you just had an open house. That was free to the public. So you help and you give back and you show the women of Greensboro that you guys are here and what you do and how you guys can help uh, business owners. So it's important to give. If you are constantly doing this, taking, 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 and not giving back, your hand is always full. Therefore, if you're not giving back, you can't receive the new blessings that, that are in store for you. So constantly strive to give back to other people. Now another thing to, to uh, consider is who is your target market? A lot of people will go to networking events. And I want to say this, this is kind of contradictory to what I'm going to say, but it's not. When you go to networking events, there's an array of people in the room. Lucy works for Women's Resource Center of Greensboro. I may be a dry cleaner, and I may walk into a room and ask Lucy what she does, and she might tell me. I may decide in my head, which a lot of people do, oh, I don't want to get involved. She doesn't, I'm a dry cleaner. She, she can't help me, or I can't help her. Well, what do I have on? What does Lucy have on? Her clothes need to get clean. A lot of people miss a lot of opportunities when they go and network because they automatically assume this, and it's always, for them, it's always, what's in it for me? There should be a what's in it for me, but it's also what's in it for this other person, or what can be in it, in it for me or that person down the line. She may not need her, need her clothes laundered right now, but down the line, she's going to need her clothes laundered. Or let's say a computer repair man, you're going to a computer repair man, and you're a real estate agent. Oh, I need him. Exactly. <laughs> but someone may think, well, I don't need a computer repairman. Oh, yeah, you do. Your computer's going to go down at some point. Or you may work for a real estate, a REMAX, and their entire system goes down. You have to call a computer man. So never, never turn down a 
a contact because there is the how, how many times have you been out somewhere and someone says you know I'm looking for someone who um, who has Mary Kay cards and I can't find anyone in Greensboro although you don't buy Mary Kay services you have a good friend who sells Mary Kay and you can say oh I know somebody I'll put you in contact with those particular relationships actually pay off but now going back to your target market now that's all good and dandy getting cards and getting to know people and connecting. But if you're tar targeting a specific market, you have to be very careful. Because if you're actually trying to market to people and you're selling chocolate chip cookies, but this particular market that you're in front of only likes uh, peanut butter cookies, you're doing yourself a disservice because they don't like chocolate chip cookies. And that's what you're trying to push on them. So research and find out how many people in the room actually do like chocolate chip cookies and seek those people out and market to those people. That's very important. You see a lot of times on Facebook, people will send out, um, Facebook has where you can target people. You can target the uh, city, the location, um, the age group, the sex, the demographics of people that you want to market to. What I find is a lot of people will just send out invites to everybody on their list. Well, if I'm having a PWN meeting here in Greensboro, why would I send in an invite to someone in California unless they're coming to Greensboro? And I say that because you're wasting time. Because the time it took you to add those California contacts, those Kansas City contacts, you could have been solely concentrating on getting more leads here in Greensboro. So make sure you know what your target market is. Again, going back to what makes you stand out. I'm going to touch each and every one of you and tell you guys what makes you stand out to me as I'm standing here looking at your brand. What makes you stand out, Tanya, right now is that I want that bracelet on your arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What makes you stand out to me is that you mentioned earlier that you're going to Cleveland. Yes. I have a godmother who's from Cleveland. That was, that's what makes you stand out. What makes you stand out to me is you're beautiful in your aqua, and I love it. You look good and I love your shirt. And you, for the same reason, I love that color on you. What makes you stand out is I want to be so bold as to wear a headband around my head. But I've tried, and it doesn't look right on me. It doesn't look right in front of me. It looks beautiful on you, and I'm going to try it again. <laughs> <laughs> what looks good on, what, what, what uh, stands out for you is that you're a real estate agent. I own two properties in Texas and uh, get ready to buy another one here in Greensboro. And you're a real estate agent, so I know next time I decide I want to buy or sell, you'll be the first person that I think about. You, you're always so smiley, you're so cheery, you have the cutest shoes on, you always <laughs> on. So Sherry, that's what stands out with you. What stands out for you for me is you remind me of my mother. My mother's deceased now, and that's not a knockoff, but she was always dressed to the nine. She was always, my mother was a name dropper. I'm not a name dropper. I'm like, look, if, I, if it looks cute and I can afford it and it doesn't fall apart, I might buy it. She would throw around a uh, Lord Taylor, Saks Fifth Avenue. She would, you would not see her in a Walmart. Not saying you would go to Walmart, but you look very classy and very, you know, uh, upscale. And that reminds me of my mother, and that's why you stand out to me. And Lucy stands out to me because Lucy is always smiling, she's so helpful, and she's just so cute to me. So <laughs> that's why those are the brands that you're portraying to me right now. So consider, consider that next time you stand in front of someone or you are in front of a group of people, how you portray, uh, what, uh, what you're portraying to other people. Uh, again, uh, standing out, the best chocolate chip cookie in Greensboro or PWN being one of the best women network groups in Greensboro, or you being the best real estate agent, you having offices in Greensboro and Charlotte, which means you're expanding, which means you're, you're doing very well for yourself. So find out what makes you stand out. Research your competition, because there is competition out there for what you do. You'd be surprised. I talked to a lady, she goes, well, I don't make good quilts. I said, well, market those quilts. She goes, well, I know somebody else who makes quilts, okay? What can you do better than her? Find out what she's doing. Go, go spy on her. Don't stalk her, but go spy on her. Spy on your competition and see what they are doing. I bet you there is something that you can say, you know what? That's good. You know what? If she did this, she'd be a lot better. But I'm not going to tell her because I'm going to steal that idea. 
So make sure you make your, you, you research your competition and make your product better than that person. And continue to do that. Now this one I like here is, what would you do for free that you wouldn't mind getting paid for? I've been in corporate America, or I was in corporate America for years. I've been a stockbroker, I've been a private investigator, I've been uh, an administrative assistant, I've been a nursing assistant, I've been a lot of things. But I started my business because I had a passion to write. I've been writing since I was little. And I finally got published in early 2000 after my first divorce. You know, I was kind of smart, didn't want to publish while I was married because I didn't want him to get half of what I had. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like marketing. I like helping people. Now, I work full time from my home. I have three businesses. And I will tell you the one thing that I would do and I still do, if I never get paid for it, is write. I love writing books. I love writing articles. I just love writing. My communication skill, the best, is writing. Everybody has their, their um, best communication skill. It may be talking. It may be whatever the case may be. Mine is writing. I can communicate better and more effectively in writing. And if I never got paid for it, I would still do it. But that's not to say I don't want to get paid for it. I'm not going to turn down any money. I'm not going to not market myself, you know, because ultimately we have to pay the bills. Although I have a husband, we still have to pay the bills. So, but find something. If you still can't figure out what this thing is that you want to brand and market to people, find out what you would do that you would that you if you didn't get paid for it, that you would still do. If you bake chocolate chip cookies, you do that anyway. Why not get paid to do it? But we know if he didn't get paid, he would still do that. Personal appearance and hygiene. I recently taught a youth leadership class for the National Black MBA. And it was on professional etiquette. And if you're going for a job interview, how you should appear. Uh, and not knocking anyone's dress, but you don't show up to a job interview with your pants sagging or dirty clothes, or ripped clothes, or ripped shoes, or anything like that. You have to put your best foot forward when you're going out for a job and you to be taken seriously, or the next person is gonna come along and get that job that you probably were qualified for, but based on your appearance, you are not the, the window covering that company was looking for. So make sure you keep yourself up like all of you ladies are. The way you carry yourself. Again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about Facebook. If you're a professional when you're in business, but you're on Facebook, you know, dropping that bomb and, you know, saying just nasty things, you know, people are watching you. And now, as we all know, before you even go look for a job, when you put that application in, people are on Facebook checking you out. They're on Twitter checking you out. Google, if they put your name in Google in Greensboro, they're going to find out all they need to find out about you. And a lot of people don't realize even though they say your settings are set to private, people can find what you're posting on Facebook. So be very careful. When in doubt, don't put it out. And then, uh, I just mentioned social media. When you're advertising, now I'm a little personal on Facebook, but I'm, I'm more, more professional. If anybody's seen any of my Facebook profiles, I may pose a personal question every now and then on what is your opinion about this. Uh, I try not to get too political or too, uh, too spiritual because that tends to throw people off and that those are the two things that tend to cause arguments. So I kind of try to steer from that. But it may be, uh, what do you think about the new park down in Greensboro? Or, you know, I'll be like, oh, this cake I just had is so good. And a lot of people are like, I don't want to hear what you have to eat. A lot of people do because they may respond. Oh, well, what's your recipe or whatever? But make sure when you're advertising, again, that you have a good, clean appearance. And make sure you're not just using Facebook and those social media sites just to just lollygag around. Use them for what they're there for, to advertise, to help with your business. A lot of people um, that I talk to that come to me for consulting say, well, I'm not on the social media or on the Facebook. It's not the Facebook. <laughs> I'm not on Facebook because I don't want to see a bunch of pictures of people's grandkids, or, which really offended me, <laughs> grandkids or what you ate for dinner. But really, that's not all that it's for. Even with Pinterest, when Pinterest first came out, 
Everybody thought, oh, it's just a bunch of pretty pictures. Do you know I post my videos on there? My announcements for my events? I do workshops on there. You can use, utilize it for the right reason. Get as much as you can out of social media while it's free. If you all can remember, when they all started out, they were all free. Now Facebook, because when Facebook started, they didn't have the, the uh, paid advertising. Uh, LinkedIn didn't have the pay side. Um, I think Twitter has a new business service that you pay for. There are going to be uh, paid for services uh, in the next, I say, three to five years. So while they're available for free, utilize them, but utilize them in the proper way. Audio and video media. I'm not sure how many of you use YouTube to advertise. How many of you use YouTube? I know you do. You do too? Okay. No one else uses YouTube? Wow. YouTube, you're a real estate agent. You can make yourself a nice video and advertise that you're, you're a real estate agent with your information, what your uh, tagline is, your motto, what your mission statement is. In a, in a, a 15, 20 second video, how they can contact you, maybe show one of your houses that you have available. Um, exactly. <laughs> Go in and show, get, take video clips of it and put it together and put it on YouTube. That's another t tool that you can use to sell your houses. I do a lot of uh, tip videos. I tape all my speeches, as you can see I'm doing this now. I tape all my workshops. Um, I do instructional videos um, on how to do certain things um, within business, also within Toastmasters. They look to me to do training for the new Toastmasters, so I'll go in and do videos on that. So, and, and people actually will come to me or send me an email, I found you through YouTube. What you're doing is seems like something that I need. Can we talk? Even if it's just to get a connection, you know, you're hoping to get an actual paying client, but that's a start. So use these social media uh, so, uh, sites, especially YouTube, Google Hangouts. How many of you know about that? Google Hangouts. Let's say, now technology has gotten so streamlined, so clever these days. How many of you remember, and I'm telling my age, the old Tupperware party? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All the ladies would get to, to, to your house and you guys would serve food and talk and share Tupperware stories and buy Tupperware. Now, you can still do that, but you can do that virtually with Google Hangouts. Meaning, you get a bunch of girls, I think it's up to, it's 10 now, and I think they're going to increase it, that people that you can have on one Hangout. You all get on a video camera. This way you don't have to pay for food. They don't have to come to your house. <laughs> you put them on video, you guys are all on this screen. You can see each other's faces. You can show products, catalog, anything you want to, and you can have a virtual party. That's been popping up on my Google, Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to hang out? I go, what? Wow. Now, even though gas is starting to come down, yeah. I have this thing about people who want to get with me and pick my brain. My brain is picked too, it can't be picked anymore. You're going to either uh, be interested in the service, or I'll give you some basic information and send you on your way. Because a lot, what I found is a lot of people pick your brain, take what you've given them, hone it, and become better than you are. You know, you've got to be careful what information you give out to a non-paying client. So what I do now is I'll say, okay, I'll either meet you via Skype, or we can do a conference call via Google Hangout. That way we can still see each other. I like to see people. I don't feel like getting in my truck, going all the way out to High Point, for you to pick my brain for two hours and not become a convertible customer. And I used to do that on a, a regular basis. So that helps you. Also, if you're working for a corporation, and let's say you have a, a business partner that's out of town, but they need to be in on this meeting with you and your five employees. You guys can all get together. They're, they're on, your, on your cell phone. If you have, you have the app on your cell phone. You have it on your tablet, your computer, your desktop, your laptop. Everybody can be in the same place. You see um, some of the commercials where you see uh, the big person on the picture. Uh, or let's put it this way. How many of you like NCIS? I love it. I love it. But you know when he goes into the room, the big person is on the picture and everybody's in the room? That's how it works. It's just on a smaller scale. So utilize that. Television and radio. It works. Contact your local television station and see if you can do one of their segments. Some of them have the morning segments 
where they feature local businesses or business owners, uh, either in the morning or in the um, afternoon. I think WXII 12 does it first thing in the morning and sometimes at noon, and Dish Triad does it throughout the day. But contact them and see if you can get on into a segment to talk about what you do. Now, I'll tell you what will get you to do a little bit faster. If you talk about how your product and service can help people in Greensboro, as opposed to saying, I'm a real estate agent, and this is what I do. Instead of saying that, I help people around Greensboro, we do this, we do that, we do this, and bring the community together. They're more community focused, and you'll get in the door a little bit faster. We did a, uh, a, a young girls conference back in uh, December at the uh, uh, Weather School Museum. And all I did was send out press releases to different news media, and Channel News 14 showed up. So um, don't knock those people either. And then radio. You know, you have different radio stations who, uh, who are looking for people to talk to to get to get their business out there. A lot of them are starving for people to talk to and, and get on their station. So talk, do the radio. Now, a lot of you are you familiar with Block Talk Radio? Block Talk. Block Talk. Block Talk Radio. Oh my goodness, this is a right audience. Okay, I need you guys to look up Block Talk Radio. I have a show, I have a show, anyone can get a show on Block Talk Radio, but you have guests come in. It's broadcast out all over the internet. You can have thousands and thousands and thousands of listeners. And they'll call in, you can, they can ask you specialty questions, whatever your, your genre is, or the particular of the meeting. They can call in. Look up Block Talk Radio, you can utilize that as well. Uh, print magazines, internet, coffee, newspapers, we know the obvious. Put an ad in the paper. We know now that the uh, newspaper uh, prices for ads are getting a little more expensive because they're not holding demand. So uh, put, a, put a press release uh, in. And then also other speaking opportunities. And Tanya just told me I had a few minutes left here. So um, uh, tip four, keep your branding fresh. Don't just get a brand and just leave it and just expect not to update it because it's going to get old. There's, Technology, as you know, is Facebook is updating every week. There's something new with Facebook because they're constantly changing. That's what you have to do with your brand. Constantly change your brand, research your brand, um, continue to reinvent yourself. Um, I have a client who is an older 70-year-old man. Well, back when I was 20 in Denmark, we used to do it this way. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> One, we're in the United States. Two, 20 years ago, things have changed so much in 20 years. We have to either catch up or we're going to be left behind. Then don't be afraid to ask for help. There are so many resources in this room alone that can help you with what it is that you need to get done. If not, there's someone out there that can help you and is willing to help. That's part of giving back. If I'm giving back, come to me and ask for help. And that's my way of giving back to you. 